Welcome back, folks, to Season 2 of Cowboy Cartel, the podcast that delves into all things hats, boots, and everything Western-related. We've got some exciting sponsors on board this season. First up, American Hat Company. Proud to be an American, proud to wear an American. American Hat Company is the official hat of Cowboy Cartel. And if you're looking for that perfect fit, look no further than Joby's Hats, our official hat shaper. Visit them in Fort Worth, Texas, or check them out online, jobyshats.com. But that's not all. We've got some exciting news. Don't forget to check out our brand new t-shirt line available for pre-order now at cowboycartelgroup.com. And for those hat enthusiasts, we've got some fantastic new hat patches to add that touch of style to your favorite lid. So grab your hats, put on your boots, and let's dive into another season of Cowboy Cartel, the podcast, where we explore the captivating world of all things hats, boots, and Western culture. Welcome back. This is our first podcast of season two. It's, what is it, May? June. It's June already. Okay, so we're six months in. We're a little bit further down the line than I had expected to uh, to get our first podcast off, but uh, we had a lot going on. We've actually moved from Austin, Texas to Fort Worth, Texas, and it's it's taken a lot out of us. We've, we've had a lot of uh, travel for, for some of the, the videos we've been doing. Um, it's just been a lot. So we're back. As you can see, we're in studio this time. It's a little different than uh, our previous podcast. Uh, there was a lot of production quality or production um, that went into creating those podcasts because Clay and Lionel were remote and we had to sync all of that video and there was always a problem. It was great. It was great to talk to those guys, but, and we, are planning to have them back, but we might not do video with them as much. It might not be video with them. It might be a call-in type of segment. Uh, we would like to do um, some more face-to-face -face stuff in studio from now on. And so we actually have our first guest in studio, Connor Cooley. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Connor, uh, man, you've got a lot of history here. Uh, first of all, you are or were the in-house hat shaper for American Hat Company. Yes, sir. But recently, you, you left American after eight years. Yes, sir. And where are you at now? I'm at Joby's Hats in Fort Worth. Joby's Hats. He, uh, he snagged a good one there. <laughs> he took them right away, huh? Yes, sir. And um, so how did you get to American? What... Uh, so first of all, you live in Bowie, Texas. Yes, sir. Have you lived there all your life? What, tell no, us a little, bit, so, a little bit of background. Actually, I moved to Bowie about, I'd say, 2012, right after my brother graduated high school. We used to live here in Fort Worth, here in Keller. And after he graduated, my family wanted to be closer together, so we moved up to Bowie, and I started and finished high school there. And then my junior year is when I started with American Hat. Okay. So did you have any experience with hats? To, no. How did you wind no. up at America? It was say, pure I accident. I needed a job. and Pure accident. So every year in Bowie, a little small town, they have a Chamber of Commerce dinner. And the table that my family got sat at, there was gift certificates. Two gift certificates said two free American hats. I didn't know what American hat was. I may look the part, but I ain't no cowboy. <laughs> so I didn't know what they were. I said, hey, free hats, I'm, I'm all for it. We went up to the factory, and at the time, the front office was not decorated the way it is today. It didn't say anything about cowboy hats anywhere. So when they said, you know, it's time to come out onto the floor and pick out what style you'd like, it's like, okay, that's kind of odd. I figured you didn't have a little booklet with ball caps in it. But when we walked out onto the floor, I realized right quick I was in the wrong place. <laughs> that was not, not, my, not my element. A couple weeks later, after we went back to pick up the hats, we were watching the lady shape, Julie Dawson. And she was shaping the hats for me and my grandfather. And I happened to mention, hey, that's kind of cool. She said, yeah, it is. And nothing else was said. It was left alone. And she takes us to the front office for us to leave. And she tells the lady that runs the front office, he wants to learn to shape. I didn't. 
And she says, great, come with me. And she takes me to the production manager of the entire factory at the time, walks me into his office and says, he wants a job. I I didn't. (laughs) I wasn't looking for one. And my interview with that gentleman lasted a whole three and a half minutes. And basically he just said, can you be here every day? Yes, sir. When can you be here? I could be here at 1130 every day. He says, okay, be here Monday. And they said, you're going to learn to shape hats. Uh, Okay. And that was over eight and a half years ago, and I'm still doing it today. <laughs> so that's that's pretty interesting. It's it's wild that you just um, it's so in, you were in high school at the time. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I was in the work program. Okay. So I'd go to school half a day and then go to work the other half. <laughs> so that was what year was that? That was I started the factory 2015, February of 2015. 2015. Okay, yes, sir. So Keith Maddox was around yes, his sir. time, and. Yes, um, sir. Keith Mundy wasn't there yet, right? No, Mundy, at the time when I got there, Keith Mundy was there. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So how was that uh, working with uh, Keith Maddox? So he made, he actually made regular visits to the factory. He was very involved. He'd come up there, if not once a week or every couple of weeks, he'd come up and he'd walk the floor, you know, hi, how's everybody doing? Kind of shaking hands, giving hugs. So, I mean, it was, it was good to work for him. I mean, he was always there. You know, he, he made he made it a point to, like I say, come around and say hello to everybody. So that was, you know, it kind of made it a little more personal. Well, that's another thing that I've I've noticed and I've heard about Keith Mundy is he goes around, walks yes. the floor, and talks to he people. He very much ask, does the same thing. Ask how you are, you need anything. Mm-hmm. So. He makes it a point. I mean, he, he just talks with people. You know, you can't have that many people working for you and not try and make it a point to know something about someone. I mean, it. a lot of the people in that building have been there X amount of years, not just, you know, they're not just new, or they've been there a year or two. No, there's some of those people in that building that have been there five, six, seven, ten years. You spend that long in the same building as somebody, whether or not you care about them or not, you're going to learn about them. It just it, it happens that way. 2015. Mm-hmm. American wasn't as ridiculously big as it is now. No, sir. Um, when when you first got there, they were they're still pretty well known, and you know it's oh, a yeah. company been around a hundred years. Hundred years at that year, absolutely hundred years. So, uh, you know, they've had diehard fans for some time. Not crazy like it is now, but but there have been some diehard fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, JP from our group, he's been wearing American hats since the 1990s, you know, and he's diehard American fan. Mm-hmm. So they've been active in rodeo and, 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 yes, sir. and all of this for, mm-hmm. for many years. You probably had the opportunity to see plenty of famous people come through there. A lot of, a lot of people came through that factory, even from, 2015 to 2023 when I left and this is where I kind of failed because there was so many famous people that come in there in the rodeo circuit and like I say I may look the part but I'm no cowboy to me they were just ordinary people I didn't know who they were I mean I can name some of the names that came in there but to me they're just just like anybody else just because I don't I don't follow that personally it's nothing I have against it I just don't know anything about it. But uh, Tough Cooper, he made it pretty regular. Um, J.B. Mooney had been in there. Oh, what's his name? He rode with Lane Frost. He was one of that group. What's his name? Tough Edelman? Is it or Tough Cody. Edelman? Uh, Cody. Cody. He's the, he's the livestock commissioner. Mm-hmm. Okay, Cody. Um, somebody's going to get me for this. But I, I, what's his last name? I don't know. I forget. Either. He's the livestock commissioner for the PBR. Mm-hmm. He made it a point because he actually, I believe he lives not far from Bowie. So okay. he made it, he came in there pretty regularly. I mean, a bunch of famous people came Cody in. Cody Lambert. Out. Cody Lambert. <laughs> Lambert. There it is. Yes. He'd been in there plenty of times. I mean, you never know who's going to come in. And that kind of rang true because even though they were coming in, I didn't know who they were. To me, they were just, just like somebody else to me. They were, they weren't any better than me or anything like that. So, when they'd get a hat shaped, if I was the one shaping it, I wasn't really starstruck by them. They were just the same as anybody else. It's funny how that works because I have um, I've had the opportunity to meet 
some famous people. And I mean, even Joby, Joby's pretty famous. Oh yes, absolutely. And I had no idea who he, I, I knew who he was when I first met him. Not I didn't scale, have though. any idea how famous he was. So, you know, uh, once you realize the people you meet and I think I lost my camera here. Hang on a second. Technical difficulties again. But, um, but yeah, you know, once you, once you get into a situation where you meet somebody and you don't realize, or later you realize how, you know, famous this person mm -hmm. is in that specific genre, then you go back and you think, wow. But then again, why would it change the way you should feel about somebody anyway, really. You know, they're just a, another human being. Yeah, they're just like us. They've just got a really cool job. Yeah. If it's if it's a, a musical artist, you know, once again, they're just like you and me. Or they're just very got, talented, yeah. Yeah, they've just got a really cool job, and people know who they are because of it. Right. There's a lot of people that have really cool jobs or amazing at their jobs that nobody knows who they are. Exactly. Whereas that's something social media has helped a lot of people with. So when did um, when did you realize, I guess, how famous American was, or when did it when did American become famous, and you you saw it? I mean, throughout that whole period, you you had to see that. Oh, this is getting kind of crazy. So when I started in 2015, there was maybe 30 or 40 people that worked in that factory, and now I think there's somewhere close to 100. So the factory itself has grown, but. For me, it was more of basically when I kind of started seeing the rodeo circuits and stuff like that, when I started seeing some people coming in and out of there, or when I'd see people coming in for tours, and I'd see how starstruck they were at the factory itself and the process. And then when I started giving the tours myself, hearing firsthand how many people oh, I've been wanting to come here for so long, or I've heard about this for so long, or I've wondered so many things. That's when it kind of sank in. So not till probably the last three or four years did it really sink into me how how well known or how big that company is. I mean, trust me, I, I've seen how many hats go out the door. I've seen where the hats are going. They're going not just down the road, not to some little podunk store in the middle of nowhere. They're going big stores, big cities. They're going middle of nowhere downtown metropolitan areas it doesn't matter they're going across the world but it, it just it didn't start dawning on me or sinking in until i started giving the tours myself and interacting with people so give me an idea the amount of hats um say when you first started there to when you left how many hats were going out the door you said it was went from 30 people to 100 people mm -hmm. give me a number like how many hats out the door? So maybe felt wise, actually, I remember hearing this discussion not long before I left the factory, me and one of the supervisors or production managers were having that conversation, just talking about how big the company had gotten, how things had changed in our time there. And I want to say there was probably going anywhere from 60 to 80 felt hats going out the door a day at most. And straw was maybe a couple hundred at most. Whereas when I left, I think the number was two to three hundred felts and eight or nine hundred straw a day. But I mean, that number can't get much higher because of the size of the company itself. They're limited in size and people, and then everything's done by hand. It's not automated. So, I mean, you can only go as fast as human hands can go. In order for. American to go to the next level or what would you, th I know this is not your area of expertise and, and we're not holding you to any answers here. <laughs> I want an opinion. What would be the next step in order for American to go to the next level and maybe put out, uh, say 500 hats or a thousand hats a day. So all of these people who have been trying to get hats for the last year and a half can get them more quickly. Would it require another factory or, uh, well, I've, I've thought about that before myself. I mean, you have a couple of different avenues of choices. Number one, you can do what a lot of companies do and automate parts of your process, if not the whole thing. Yeah, which, I, I don't think that's an option. That would, that would just, uh, in my opinion, I think that would make it no different than Stetson. Exactly. You, when you automate things, and I'm not calling anybody out when I say it, 
when you automate a process, you lose that that human touch. And while a robot can go much faster and create things that are the same over and over, it doesn't have that human touch. So they could either automate parts or the whole process or expand. Now, whether that's leave the building they're in and go to a bigger facility or open a separate facility and run two at the same time. I, I Honestly, I wouldn't know which would be better. I feel like it'd be difficult to run two separate plants, although it, in theory it would make sense to have a felt plant and a straw plant to run two at the same time in my head would seem, I don't know, it seemed like it'd be even more difficult maybe. How much land do they have there? Do they? Is it just the the little parcel they have, or is it? That... It's ba- basically it's what you see there. Okay. Now, I don't know if they'll ever get more. I don't know if they. I don't know if they'll stay in that location forever or not. Do you know any of the history about the location and the fire and all that? So, I don't know much about the history of the building itself. I know it used to be a couple of different manufacturing plants. Okay. But I believe the fire came through in 2004 or five, and that's what all those containers out back of the building are still full of old damaged material. Really? Mm-hmm. They, you can't really get rid of it anyway, and, and and none of it's worth reusing. So the fire, when it came through and they had to shut down, this was something that Keith Maddox did. He kind of... He made it clear that as long as people on staff came in and they were helping clean or help do something, just come in and help whatever you can do, whether it's cleaning, picking stuff up, as long as you were helping, he wasn't going to fire anybody. Nice. And he held that. They, they used that same standard after he passed away and COVID hit and we had to shut down. You know, we shut down for a month or the factory shut down rather for a month. They could have chose not to pay anybody because there was nothing coming out or going in. But they kind of had that same discussion of, well, what would Keith Maddox do? Keith Maddox paid them when he wasn't making any money from the fire, so he would still do the same, so they still paid when everyone was shut down for a month. Well, and that, I guess, brings us to COVID, mm-hmm. really. What um, what differences have you seen in the factory? I know when we when we talked to Cody Bates... Um, he mentioned, you know, that he would come in because he didn't, he got, he got bored and the, the factory was empty and he got mm-hmm. bored and he came in and he made hats and he, he told us this funny story. Um, he was there all day working and, uh, he met Keith Mundy in the factory and he's like, what are you doing here? He's like, what are you doing here? He said, I've been here all day. He said, me too. <laughs> so, <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't uncommon. I mean. During that month off, even I went in a few days to help. Uh, they called, Cody Bates called me and said, man, do you have time? You want to come in and help clean and reorganize? I said, yeah, I'm just like everyone else for the past few years. Get me out of the house. So me, Cody Bates, Keith Mundy, and a couple of other individuals came up and we reorganized the floor. I mean, we vacuumed, we cleaned up a lot of felt, we cleaned up a lot of everything around the building, basically. Reorganized the floor in a more... I guess at the time we thought it was a safer in a COVID sense. We organized things where people weren't as close to each other. We kind of followed those guidelines that had been set. But that was one of the first times I'd ever seen Keith Mundy in not work attire Mm -hmm. or anybody for that matter. It was weird seeing a different side of the factory when you don't see production. How long long were you shut down? We were shut down for a month. Just a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's and we didn't really, great. from my understanding, we didn't have to shut down because it wasn't a public business. It was a privately owned, not open to the public business. So from my understanding, we didn't have to shut down. Mm-hmm. But they chose to to let everybody kind of have a chance to be safe and be at home with their families. At the time, nobody realized that no one wanted to be at home with their families because <laughs> they were going to be stuck there for another year or two. That was a crazy time. Nobody knew what was going on. Everybody, no, you know, the, no one still the, does. The media, the media made it uh, a huge disaster. Um, you know, I'm not saying it wasn't. No. Uh, but 
the, the, the media didn't do much to help ease everyone's fear. So I've, I've heard a lot about quality going downhill since, since COVID, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering, is it more because of the high demand and new people? And I don't think the quality is bad. No. But uh, I hear stories that it's not what it used to be, maybe. Well, and I feel like that goes for everything, not just American Hat. I feel like that can't be just singled out there because, I mean, you think about a lot of the old-timers you hear, well, they don't build trucks like they used to, or they don't, they don't do this like they used to. Well, I mean, I'm sure you have had your hands on maybe a uh, uh, 4x resist all from 1982 that feels like you know 100x hat well just yesterday i had a gentleman come into the store and i he brought a hat an american actually a maxi felt we got one right here and it was from the mid 90s or early 90s and it was in poor shape when i got a hold of it by the time we got done with it it was almost like a new hat so if you haven't seen my video on, on the Maxi Felt reshaping, um, it's, it's a fantastic hat. I, uh, for, it's a, it's a wool blend, yes. right? So it does have some, um, rabbit in it. Um, it does not feel like a wool hat. Um, you can get them this day for a hundred dollars, sometimes less than that. Um, at I think it's a fantastic hat. It shapes good. Mm -hmm. it, it feels They're good. They're a sturdy hat. It's a nice hat. It's a really nice hat. Um, but, uh, sorry, that was a little segue there. <laughs> a little tangent. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I agree with you. Quality across the board is going down. Um, we won't... We won't uh, you know, call out other, other brands, you know, <laughs> in the $250 range. But, um, what are, what do you see as the main differences in American hat and maybe a mass produced hat? And also maybe some of these, um, smaller companies that are, that are putting out hats, but also doing kind of hand stuff. Like you've got JW Brooks, you've got, um, Greeley and you've got, uh, bigger, mm -hmm. So what do you, what do you see the difference in, in American? I know Bigger he was he was with American for a while. Was he when did, when did he leave? Do you know? Uh, that was before my before time. You? Not no. long before, but before my time. Okay. Now when it comes to the smaller brands, the for example the J W Brooks hats like you mentioned. Obviously, I've been with American for eight years. I can tell you almost anything about those. I know those hats. I've only just now started dealing with other brands of hats. Okay. So I'm I I can't say anything about those. I'm not familiar. I don't even know if I've had a J.W. Brooks hat in my hand yet. Now, the main difference in American is the fact that it is still handmade. They could automate so much of that process and speed things up, but they refuse to. You lose the, the craftsmanship. A robot will never have the touch that you and I have. Right. They'll, they'll have sensors, but that sensor doesn't feel every little thing that your and my hand does. And that's something about an American felt. It's it's one of the best finished hats I've ever seen. I mean, and that goes from a 7X all, all the, way the way up. up. Um, to me, I think maybe the 10X is a little bit better finished than a 7, but but I wouldn't have any problem wearing a 10X hat. I think they're I think they're a great hat. Um, no, that, that that and that's what most people own, especially with the way the prices are going. Yeah that most people are happy to have that 7 or that 10X. And I tell people all the time, it depends what you're using the hat for. Exactly. If you're looking for a hat that's just going to be your going out to dinner hat or your go to church hat, a 7X, 7X will last you forever. Exactly. If you're wanting a hat that you're going to wear it out to dinner, but you're also going to wear it and work in it every day, you'll want to buy the higher quality. You get what you pay for. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, personally, I like uh, 200 and 500. I like the 500 just mm -hmm. because it's it's just so dense and it's as pure as it can slick. get. Um, I think it's a, it's a great hat. But for like my everyday hat, I love the 200. Mm -hmm. 200 is great. And I've got um, uh, you know, I've got a couple 40 X's, and mm -hmm. it seems like I'm getting more 40 X's now. And 
they are pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, a 40X, um, I've seen some that are pre- pretty soft. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that kind of put me off of the 40X for a while. But this new stuff, man, it's fantastic. The 40X, I mean, it's always been pushed as a lifetime hat. Right. That's the entry level lifetime hat. Whereas, you know, a, a seven or a ten X is. I mean, it can it can last you a lifetime, absolutely. But the higher quality forty X and up, they offer the the renovation, and those bodies are different because they will they will survive the renovation, whereas a seven X or a ten X probably wouldn't survive that and come back as a good hat. Exactly. And if you don't know, um, 40X is the, is the starting point for factory renovation. Once mm-hmm. your hat is beat to hell, basically. Yeah. Once you, it's seen better days. Um, and and this, is, this is funny because Cody Bates says he has received hats and he looked at for renovation. He's looked at them and he said, this does, it doesn't need anything but brushed off. You know, it doesn't need to go through the renovation yes. process. I've seen those. So it's when your hat is really gone, you know, that, that it needs to be sent back and that's yeah. a that's a long process it goes completely through gets like degrees it starts over i mean you start over basically like you would if it was a brand new hat so here's a question i have um 100x and above mm-hmm. the 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 self band is actually part of the single hat yes below that it's um a a, a, blank, uh, a hat what do you what would you call it um a baker's dozen a, hat. Sac- a sacrifice hat a yeah. whole hat sacrificed yeah. to make it's a, yeah it's a baker's dozen hat basically just an extra hat that's made with that order so what happens when you send a, a hat in to be refurbished how do you how do they deal with that hat band so if it's a higher usually higher quality 100x and up like you say it has the self band that comes from the brim most of the time, they'll cut that brim down and use that. Uh-huh. They tell most people, I believe they tell them that, look, the brim's going to come back shorter. Okay. That's an option. Now, they do have trim kind of stocked up, basically, from the extra hats they make. Now, they'll try and get one that's close, and if they can't, then they'll have to cut the hat. Now, cutting the hat is usually the last resort. I mean, once you cut it off, it, it's, it's gone. <laughs> right. There's no going back. So... They only cut it if they have to. And, and it's funny you say that because you, you might not think it's a big deal, but I've had, uh, I had a 10X pecan that I loved the hat and um, I cut the brim down too short mm-hmm. and I just, I didn't like the hat anymore. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, and, and it's, it's kind of weird. Um, a lot of people will start with a hat and they'll go smaller on the brim. Because they think they're not used to wearing a hat. No. And so they're not used to this big exactly. hat going on. And so they'll start with a smaller, smaller hat, four inches or, or even smaller. Mm-hmm. And then they realize, well, this is too small. Exactly. And I'm then wearing, they have to buy another one. I'm wearing a four and a half. I, mm-hmm. When I first started wearing hats, four and a half was ridiculous. I couldn't it was wear a four crazy. and a half. You know? I'm at that point right now. I can't <laughs> wear a four and a half. My hats are four and a quarter. Okay. And I feel like any bigger than that would be too big on me. So mm-hmm. I understand. I found that uh, the shape a lot of times yes. um, has a lot to do with brim I, size. I'm trying to think if I have a four and a quarter over there because I use the same brim shape mm-hmm. on a four and a half and four and a quarter. And it's basically the same brim shape that I'm wearing on my head right now. Yeah. Okay. The difference is there again. Yours is just a little further out because it's four and a half. Yeah. Okay. It, but I think it. I think it suits. It, it doesn't look... I think it doesn't look bad. You find the no. right brim shape for you, and a brim shape it works. can you can make a four and a half look like a four and a quarter if you know what you're doing. Same thing, you can make a four and a quarter look bigger depending how you shape it. So, if you're interested in a four and a half, but they only have a four and a quarter, if you have the right hat shaper, they can make it work. Same thing if you have a, a if you want a four and a quarter and all they have is a four and a half, they can make that work as well if you have the right person. Hmm, that's interesting. And at a quarter inch or eighth inch, whatever difference in brim length, a quarter inch doesn't seem like much till it's on the end of your nose or the end of your hat. <laughs> the end of your nose. I've heard that before. It's funny. Yeah. Um, so talking about shaping, we, we, we've talked about history. We haven't really talked about you and shaping hats uh, yet. How many... 
walk me through your, your process when you first started. How did you learn to shape hats? <laughs> how long did it take you? Um, what was what was the process? So when I first started, the first shape I ever learned to do was a brick. So even to this day, I always have a sweet spot for it. That's my favorite shape to do because it's the easiest to me and the fastest. When I was first started shaping at the factory, I was coming in every day from 1230 to 430. I was there four hours. And in four hours, I was shaping 15, 20 hats maybe. Whereas by the time I left earlier this year, on a good day, I was doing anywhere from four to 500 hats a day. And that's from 7 to 4.30. 400 hats a day. On average, yes, sir. Sorry, I just want to make sure I ask you a couple of questions here in the future. But we got to talk about 400 hats a day. I did the math on this. Um, <laughs> I, I, did, I did the math on this, um, I, I don't know, when I first met you. Mm-hmm. I, I, we've met before. We've seen each other in the factory. Yes, sir. But we really started talking... Uh, when, when I met you at Joby's. Yes, sir. And so I did the math on this, and it's, it's a ridiculous number. 400, it, it, what was it, a 10-hour shift or something like and that? And about, well, if you count, so 7 to 4, 7 to four o'clock, that's what? Nine hours, but 30 minutes for lunch and then two 15-minute breaks. So basically an eight, eight-and-a-half-hour day. Okay. So you're looking at somewhere roughly 50, 50 to 60 hats an hour. Roughly that's, about a hat a minute. That's a hat a minute. Okay. Now we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about taking an open crown, open crown, flat brim, shaping the shaping the crown, mm-hmm. shaping the brim, mm-hmm. and sending it out. And I mean, we're not just talking about you didn't just grab a hat and fold it and and throw it down. You had to you had to do other things in the process. That's, you read you pick up each hat off the rack. You read the ticket. You read what the shape is supposed to be. You kind of glance over it, make sure that everything on the ticket matches the hat. I mean, right. The thing with American is, or I'm sure it's with every manufacturing process ever. You have your one job, absolutely, and you do. Every company has its own quality control department. While that may not be your department, everybody's responsible for it. I mean, if you see something that's wrong, either you fix it or you send it to get fixed. So everybody kind of would look at something. You give the take, give the hat a once over, look at the ticket, make sure everything was right. And if everything was right, then I'd go ahead and do it. So what what I'm trying to convey here is there's more than just shaping that hat in that one minute time frame. Oh, you yeah. have you have if you're averaging a hat a minute, you're looking at tickets. You're you're well, look at the hats time it around. takes to steam a hat. So exactly, you don't just start start shaping. You actually have to heat the hat up first to get it to where you want it. So I'm telling all of this so that we can show this video that, <laughs> that I'm about to show here. It's it's a video. Why don't you set this video up for us? So. Obviously, I was I was teaching classes on how to shape to Americans' customers. A lot of who I taught was stores that would send either new people or people that had been there for years. Whether they knew what they were doing or not, they would send them to the factory to learn. You never you never stop learning. I still learn to this day. I'll always be that way. If I ever stop learning, that means I'm done. That means I don't need to be doing it anymore. But I would teach people, and. You know, when I first started at the factory, or I started teaching, I don't know, 2020, 21. So just a few years ago, I'm only 25, so at the time I was 21, 22 years old. Well, I don't have the most facial hair in the world, and I look like a young kid because I still am a young kid. So a lot of people would come in, and if it was, you know, somebody that was in their 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, somebody that's been around this business for a long time, and been shaping for a long time, they'd look at me and think, oh, "What's what? What can this kid do? What can this kid teach me?" So I, you know, I wouldn't force them. I'm not going to try and force anybody that doesn't want to listen to me. So if I would kind of give them a basic, you know, this is what you should start with, and if they'd listen, great. If they wouldn't, I kind of had my own little, little, little show I'd put on, basically, just to show that I know what I'm doing, and. A lot of the times I'd tell people, hey, you, I want you to practice, but I'm still over here doing my job. That doesn't mean that you can't talk to me. I can still help you with whatever you need, but I still have to do my own job as well. 
So while you're learning, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be working on production hats. So if they didn't want to listen or were doing their own thing, that's fine. They're on their time, not mine. I would kind of put my headphones in, mind my own business, and start shaping. And usually to the point I would hit a rhythm where I was knocking out a rack of hats, and a rack was 12 hats. I'd knock it out in just a couple of minutes, four or five minutes maybe, and I'd finish that rack and I'd look up and I'd usually have them staring at me. And usually from then on they would ask a lot of questions, and that's exactly what happened in this video is I had a, a group of people from a boot barn store. And it's not like they were being unruly. That's not it. They were just watching me. I didn't know they were watching at the time. And I was just kind of in my own little rhythm, in my own little world. And I was just going hat right after another. I think they were all Minic JBs is what I was doing on that run. And I was just knocking them out one after another. And I happened to look up, and there's a camera. <laughs> and a young lady said, do you mind if I film you? I said, I I don't mind, I guess. You do whatever you want. I'm just over here doing my job. And I went ahead and shaped a hat, finished it up, and showed it to her. And that's when she said how long it took. I didn't know how long it was taking me to shape a hat. I thought I was still taking a few minutes. I didn't realize that I was moving as quick as I was. And how long was it? I think it was like 31 seconds. 31 seconds. So... 31 seconds for a hat, it's it's kind of <laughs> unbelievable to see, especially from me. Um, I, you know, I take, um, I've, I've been shaping for a, a little over a year. Um, I haven't had quite the amount of volume as you've had. But well, bear in mind, that's, that's not shaping for a customer. Exactly. If you walk into a store and you see somebody shaping that fast, Turn tail and run. Because <laughs> if, if you're shaping that fast for a customer, there's no way that it's perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are the chances of getting one perfect anyway? They're slim to none. You never get one perfect. But if you're shaping that fast, you'll never get it perfect. And the customer doesn't get the experience. Most of the time a customer is getting a hat shaped, it's for an experience. It's a dying art. And if you're blowing through it like it's nothing... <laughs> How's that going to make a customer feel when you're manhandling their $200 <laughs> straw hat or five or six or $700 felt hat? Right. So I was doing production. That's, that is, that's a completely different ball game. So, I mean, it's hard to compare. Yes, we're doing the same job shaping. I'll do the same shaping I do in the store versus at the factory. But on the same time, it's two separate games. Well, th that brings me to my next question, actually. Um, what... What is the difference between factory shaping and um, shaping for a customer? We pretty much answered that, but how how long did it take you to get into the to adjust. retail? Yeah, it there's there's some adjustments. Now people would come into the factory and we would shape for them there. So obviously I got a little bit of training there. You you shaped my hat. You shaped this hat. Um, Joby did uh, tweak it. Because you didn't, you shaped this at the factory for me. You weren't there. I wasn't there. It was production, so exactly. I don't have your head there to make sure it's right. So I, my job is get it close enough. You I nailed it. You nailed it. Um, I, I like a lot of dip on mine. Joby. Well, obviously, uh, I didn't nail it if you had Joby fix it. <laughs> you nailed the, the width and everything. <laughs> you, I sent pictures in. Um, and so, you know, the hat was exactly what I wanted. Apparently I just, not. I wanted, a, I wanted a little more dip. Okay. <laughs> Joby, Joby tweaked it a little bit, but but other than that, uh, I love the American. We talked about this today. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the American Minic. I think um, it, you called it a peanut. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> the lady that taught me to shape, Julie. That's what she kind of <laughs> she kind of made fun of me at first because that's the way I did them. If you don't know, um, it's. <laughs> It's, it's it's different. It's, it's fat um, on the ends and narrow in the middle. Yeah, it's so <laughs> the, the actually it kind of comes in at the top. It comes in toward the middle on both sides, and um, it kind of looks like a peanut here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, Outline so. of peanut. <laughs> but I, I love I love that shape, and I I've seen this on factory uh, minix at um, Cavenders, mm -hmm. and I said. I gotta have one of those. <laughs> so I, I'm not a big fan of um, a minic in general. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of two that I have. I, I wear Catalan. I wear Catalan, 
And but I, I do love this hat. I, I love the. I've always loved the the fifty one hundred. I think uh, we're gonna have to pause for a minute and let me change battery now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll be right back. In just a second. All right, we're back. We had to uh, we had to change the battery and and start everything over again. But while we were off camera, we were talking about um, we were talking about hat shapes and and kind of little things that I particularly like on a hat. Well, that. <laughs> That led Connor to say that uh, uh, the next hat I'm doing, next hat, what'd you say? The next hat I get, I'm doing next my hat. Next hat you or? get, I mean, I'm not shaping it. For you. you already <laughs> said I shaped the one on your head and it wasn't right, so yeah, looks like yeah, you're doing yeah, the next yeah, one. Maybe you'll get it right. <laughs> and if you don't, it's your own fault. So uh, that that led us to talk about this hat, which is the uh, the new Grenadine from American. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a video on this, and we've got another video coming because it needs to be shaped. Well, I brought this out. Uh, to talk about the next one, uh, the next video we're doing. And this is my wife's hat, and she wants me to do the hat. <laughs> I told her that if I'm doing the hat, she has to do the videos like I do, where you have to interview the shaper. So mm-hmm. I think it's fair, right? I mean, as fair as fair, but good luck. But I'm a little nervous about shaping this hat because I, I shape hats. Uh, I don't know how many I did today. I don't keep track. I don't. I know I didn't do as many as you. Yeah, but you have your own critic now, <laughs> and you have to go home with said critic. Right. Exactly. It's a bit different story. Exactly. So I'm a little nervous about doing this hat because it is a ridiculous. I mean, if you've seen this at the factory, right? Mm-hmm. It's the the qualities of this hat. It's it's it almost has a black shadow when you're looking at it. Oh. It doesn't come across on camera. I'm colorblind, remember? <laughs> so that's so a gray me, hat. It's a gray hat. So to me, it's just another black hat. <laughs> just another black hat. So you don't you don't get to see the crazy colors that's going on with this hat, which so is which is some hats I do, like okay. the black cherry. It's not black cherry to me. The black cherry is black. Yeah. It, right there now the, the midnight blue, I can kind of see that color sometimes in the sun. I don't have that one. This one here, it just looks like another black hat sitting there. Really, it looks like black hat. Yep. <laughs> well, it's, isn't that infuriating for trying to describe it? It, it is. Uh, it's yep. go ahead, describe the color to me. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess you wouldn't have any idea what I was talking about. That's why I said, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there's that hat. Um, I guess I'll be doing that maybe. If you want to do it, or if you want somebody else to do it, I mean. Well, she wants me to do it. We'll it's see what happens. It's just another hat. We'll see what happens. It's just another hat. Well, it's also uh, it's a it's also a good opportunity for me to go out and visit uh, hat shapers, and it might seem trivial because just going out to see a hat shaper and get a hat shaped uh, on video. But what actually I'm doing is I'm finding the best hat shapers that are out there. Believe it or not. There are a lot of bad hat shapers out there. I'm learning that as I'm having to fix a lot. I'm learning that as I'm having to reshape hats. I hear this on a daily basis. Well, I got this hat at so-and-so, or I took it to so-and-so to get it shaped, and I'm just not happy with it. I've, I hear that at least twice a day. Yeah. Well, you know, it, there's a lot of people who go and get their hat shaped, and it might be messed up if you and I looked at it and say, God... You know, that's what horrible. happened to it, but they don't know, you know, they think it looks fine mm-hmm. and maybe that's, that's fine. If they, if they're happy with it, fine. Exactly. But it's I, the little details that other hat people or hat shapers will notice. Well, you know, the thing is I noticed it from the beginning. I'm kind of picky and that's what led me on the journey <laughs> that is, <laughs> that has become this crazy, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't get a hat shaped you couldn't get it right to, to my, you know, standards. Uh, I would take a hat. I didn't like it. I, and so that led me to best hat and which led me to Joby. Well, I mean, think about it this way. A lot of people, I deal with that a lot. I hear that a lot from individuals, customers, whatever you want. They'll, they'll bring me a felt hat or something and they'll say, I'm sorry that I'm being so picky. No, don't you dare apologize. You're spending if it's an American, the cheapest one you can get is four hundred and seventy dollars. <laughs> yeah. You're spending five hundred dollars or more on a felt hat, or two hundred dollars or more on a straw hat. Don't apologize to me for being picky. If you're spending that much, you ought you 
as an individual or a consumer is the one buying it should expect nothing but the best quality from me. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're not happy with it, that's not your fault or your problem. That's and, mine. And you know, if there's something that I can't do, um, or I'm having trouble with, like today, um, the gentleman wanted his, he wanted that thing, the sides straight up mm-hmm. and down. And I've never done it. I don't even, would you call that a taco? Was it? I mean, it was, that was. It was too wide to be a taco, but it was more of the quarter horse straight up on the sides. And so that's something I'd never done. And I had no idea how to get it to that point. And I said, hey, Connor, I, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Can you help me? And you helped me. So, and I appreciate all the help mm-hmm. you give me. Uh, but, as you know, there, there's, some, ask, there, there's some help. things I don't know. And I'm not, I'm not too proud to say I don't have any idea what's <laughs> going on There's things I here. don't know. There's things people ask me to do that I've never done still. Well, you know, and, and shaping names is different across the board, mm-hmm. at which I have a note on that. I want to talk about uh, the American shapes here in a minute. But, you know, Joby has this huge book of shapes, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, they're called something different. And, you know, maybe that's uh, for this, you know, uh, particular subculture it's widely known but Mm -hmm. for from where i I come from it's not a shape i know so um you know shaping at joby's is is different than shaping at american because american has a standard i've had to relearn his shapes i mean i know the standard for the american shapes the jb seven inches the j six the u brim eight the cool hand loop nine I know those like the back of my hand. It's muscle memory to me at this point. But when you go to the store and they have their way of doing it, that they've been doing it for so long, and their customers come to expect that, I've had to relearn and reteach myself (laughs) what certain shapes are. When somebody says they want a minic, to me, from an American hat standpoint, a minic is a crown. Whereas in that specific store, per se, the minic is a crown and brim. It's a done hat. So when somebody says, I want a minic, crown, brim, well, what, are we, what are we talking? Right. So it, it, there is a learning curve, absolutely, because everyone has different names, while there may be five different names for the same shape. And I always have to ask, okay, you know, they say, I want a minic, crown, minic, you know, I want a minic, you mm-hmm. want a minic crown, you want a minic brim. Yes. Well, how wide? Mm-hmm. Because Joby makes a minic brim from seven inches to 11. Yeah. As wide <laughs> as you want it. I mean... And so the Minic JB is one of the most popular shapes I did at American. That was the most popular, most common shape I would send out the door. There, it's a Minic crown, just like what you're wearing, and a JB brim is seven inches wide. Since I've been at that store, I've done maybe two hats that have been seven inches wide. Everyone wears them wide. Yeah. And that may be just what's popular right now or what's popular with that culture. It, it could have many different things, many different reasons. But like you say, everyone has different names for the same thing. Three, four, five separate people might look at the hat that I'm wearing and say, well, that's a cattleman. Somebody may say, oh, that's a cowboy. Oh, that's a rancher. It's all the same basic shape. It's all still right. the old school traditional cowboy crease, whatever you want to call it. So learning the new names and the new styles there's a learning curve absolutely so american uses this um standard shapes Mm -hmm. and they basically use that for their retailers Mm -hmm. so the retailers can order this shape it's not uh, now best hat uses pretty much these same shapes because of their relationship with american yes yes and, but they'll do other things, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, they'll do whatever you want to do. If you have an idea, all you got to do is just convey it. Right. But this, this standard um, book of shapes from American has kind of become what people think of, especially in the American group, as these are the shapes. And it's not. I mean, a hat shape can be anything. I've done, I've done a hat shape in a, a horseshoe. I've done, um, you know, I've done a, a cactus on this mm-hmm. um, Maxi felt down there, you know, not all of the shapes are on American. Those are just a standard set of shapes to go out yeah, to. Not a, a every retailer. shape is going to be in a book or on a piece of paper. Right. We tell people when they get a hat shaped at the store, we can do everything that's in that book. 
We can do everything that you can imagine. If you see something in that book and you want to base it on something else, as long as you can tell me what you want, I'll do my best to get it. We actually had a comment uh, the other day on somebody asked uh, the SC. Can, do you have a picture of the SC? And <laughs> there you go. Here you go. The starter crease. <laughs> There's an SC right there. The starter crease in the felt. The only reason they have that, cre- that starter crease in them is so they'll fit in the box. And if you ask for an SC on a straw, that's what you're getting. That's what you get. That's a starter crease. And this is this is basically a shape that you send out to a retailer so they have less work when they're when yeah. they're shaping. Yeah. All you have to do with that hat basically, you've already got the back rolled. You've already got the sides brought up a little bit. All you have to do is set your corners and then basically dip it down if they want it dipped. Mm-hmm. It's virtually half done for you. It's cheating. Mm-hmm. It's cheating. <laughs> I, you know, I did a video with Emilio out at Double Our Hat mm-hmm. House, and he said um, he wishes that he could get them as flat as possible. Yes. He wanted them pancake flat. On but, a felt hat, a lot of people do that. I mean, you look at a lot of manufacturers. I I thought, there again, I didn't know, call it ignorance, I didn't know that Americans are one of the very few companies that puts starter crease on their hats. So now when people are bringing a hat to me out of the box, it's open and it's flat. (laughs) It's flat like what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And the shaping difference, there's there's a difference in shaping a hat that's flat versus one that has a basic starter crease in it. There is, in a felt hat for sure, there's a difference. So I can understand where a retailer versus a customer might see things differently. A retailer, I can completely understand why they would like to have them completely flat. Mm Mm-hmm. And there are some some uh, stores that order from American, and they they order their hats completely flat, and they get them that way. Really? Mm-hmm. You can request it and actually have it done, because this right here, that's done at the shaping table. Right. That was what we did. That wasn't what a machine does. So did you put your hands basically on every hat that went through there? So it, unless they were uh, crown and brim uh, pressed, right? Or did you even even the crown and brim pressed, we would shape. Okay. Because, I mean, as it goes to the line, you have people bending on it and pulling on it to sew on it. So it gets warped. So every felt hat, for sure, because they used to do the starter crease like that for the felts. It used to be done in the back when they would finish it. Mm-hmm. To optimize the process and speed it up, they said, hey, let's get the hat shapers to do it. I don't know, which, you know, makes sense. So I say towards the end, probably the last eight, nine months of my employment there, if there was a felt hat that went out the door, I had my hands on it. Mm-hmm. And even now, when somebody brings a hat, somebody buys an American, for example, and or somebody in the store pulls an American from the back and brings it up and hands it to the customer, I can look at the starter crease that's in it and almost tell whether it's one of mine or not, which is kind of a curse sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I did that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of judge my own work. You always judge your own work. So we talked a little bit about the brim shapes, um, and and you said the JB was the most popular. Mm-hmm. What's the most popular crown? So, I mean, the most popular crown that I was doing shaping, that I was shaping was either going to be a pressed RC, a rancher, which is just another form of the cattleman, or... It was going to be a hand-shaped minic. The hand-shaped minic was hands down probably the one of the most popular ones that I ever ordered or ever shaped just because it's versatile. If you don't like a minic, for example, that hat you're wearing, if you don't like that minic, I can change that minic to a cattleman like that. And anyone, anyone that can shape can. So instead of just having one crown, you had the possibility of at least two now. So you always have a backup to fall back on. And then, like I said, for some reason, it's popular. For me... I'm not a big fan of it. To me, it, it's not my style. You know, it, it, it wasn't mine either. Um, as we said, you know, I have two minics. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's growing my, on you. My thing, thank you. My thing with a minic is, with all of my hats, is I pick my hat up off of my head by the crown. 
And mm-hmm. most minics that I've seen, they're too wide or there's no way to get purchase on it mm-hmm. to get it off your head. This shape is what changed my mind about the minic, seeing this uh, at a Cavenders. The American minic is what I call it because it's just different. <laughs> And it's actually a, <laughs> a Connor Minnick, isn't it? <laughs> Does Julie shape like this? Be it good or bad? Well, that was one thing is, for example, when I said the JB is 7, the J-Brim is 6, the U-Brim is 8, and the Kohan Luke is 9, when I said that, those guidelines were put in place for her and I. Mm-hmm. Because you have two separate people shaping, doing the same shapes. Well, if you go to two stores... And you, I, you, you bring a hat, two identical hats. For example, this one right here, if you had the sister hat to it, and you took one to Best Hat and one to Joby's, and you told them, I want a Minic JB at each store, and you put those two hats together, they're not going to be the same. No. They're going to be similar, but they're going to be totally different because no two people shape the same way. So those guidelines and those measurements, they put those in place for us so we... Even though we shaped a little differently, we could still have hats that were the same. So when they would get sent to a retailer, a retailer didn't open up the box and have 17 different hats <laughs> that are supposed to have the same shape. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that's kind of what would make Americans stand out, though, is if not every hat Well, is it the does. Same. Yeah. It does. But at the same time, if, for example, if you ordered seven, uh, you know, 18 came in a master, if you ordered 18 of that hat you have on your head, a minic with what I would consider a JB brim. Well, as the way I shape, you're going to have 18 of that. If Julie does nine of them and I do nine of them, nine of them are going to look like that. <laughs> right. And nine of them you're going to look at and go, is this what I ordered? <laughs> Maybe this isn't what I want. So that was what those guidelines were for. Because mm-hmm. obviously in a store you have loose guidelines the guidelines don't necessarily matter in a store it's just to give a customer an idea of what they're going to get right you put that basic shape in it and then you change it whether it may be perfect or they may look at it and go nope let's do something completely different or let's change it all the way uh, that's interesting and and it's interesting to uh, if you if you don't think about it it's just a hat you're picking up a hat but american hats for the most part are hand shaped if you're getting a hat uh, unless you're getting a, ra- a rancher a right? rancher uh, rc or a cb mm-hmm. rc cb l a so those are those are all cattleman style those are all different form of the of the cattleman absolutely the a crown was uh you'll see the a crown actually the stetson what is it a lot of Skyline the skyline or sue me i don't know, I don't know. um all I know is the felt Stetson pressed A, what I would consider an A crown, is taller in the front than it is in the back. I've noticed that. Okay. But that's an A crown, or what I would consider an A crown. The RC, the Rancher, the sides are a little bit shorter. It's basically the crown that I'm wearing, just a little more updated. The L crown is a very, very shallow, the L crown, L Stockman. It's a very shallow cattleman. It's not as pronounced as what I'm wearing. Then the CB is... The really low, really old school. Crease. So I've heard I've heard two things about that. The CB is a cowboy. Mm-hmm. I've cowboy. also heard it's Cody Bates. <laughs> huh. I've never heard that before. You haven't heard that, huh? No, because well, there again, most of what I know about shaping comes from him and Julie. Mm-hmm. So when I think of a Cody Bates cattleman, that's a Cody Bates cattleman. Pretty wide. That's a wide. That's a wide cattleman, kind of. I won't say squared off on the ends, but it kind of curls in on the sides. That's that's the way I had seen him do it for years, and naturally that's the way I picked up on it. That's gonna, the way I learned. I'm going to grab a cattleman real quick. Put this over here. And that's the way I still shape my cattlemans today, unless otherwise specified by the customer. So this is my favorite cattleman. Uh, this is... Probably, this is the hat that I will take, either this one or I will take my 500X um, steel that Joby did um, because he did it off of this hat. This is kind of like my master hat. <laughs> that's that's the... That's the base. That's the, that's, that's the hat. Copy this one. I want yep. this. Yep, yep. So that's that's my hat. And um, so that's that's the cattleman. This is a Ryan um, at best hat. Oh, Ryan, okay. 
Yeah. Actually, Ryan. I believe Ryan was the one that taught me because when I first started at the factory, I was struggling with the cattleman. I didn't understand it. He's he actually came up and helped teach me. I learned a lot from a lot of different people on how to shape. So, but yeah, if you can see, that's that's my favorite cattleman versus. Um, yeah. Versus more of the Cody Bates style that you were referring to. And in this way a little bit. Here, let's see. Yeah. And um, so just the, the amount of dip on this one, that's, you know, that's kind of, this is just the, that's just my hat, man. That's, mm -hmm. that's my, that's my favorite. You don't have to justify that to anybody. It's your style. <laughs> that's me. It doesn't matter what anybody else right. thinks. Well, it matters what your wife thinks about it, but right. it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Now it has, it has over the years, it's gotten, um, it's gotten higher on the sides. Oh, yeah. um, they it used, it used they to be, move and they warp. It used to be relax. a little wider, but I don't touch it. I just leave it like it is. <laughs> and that's another thing. Um, Americans to me, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, um, you mentioned that American will be changing the wire. It's possible. It's possible. Mm -hmm. In the brim. They're, they're and, trying out a different wire, I believe. I don't know if it's going to make it, make the cut or not. And um, I, I love the American wire because it's so easy to shape. Mm -hmm. And if, if it gets bent, easy for me to Anybody tweak can it back. Fix it. Right. Uh, but that being said, th I have had very few issues ever with my hats getting out of whack. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the 50-50. I think the 50-50 is the one it's that... It's a flimsy hat. It is a It's, it's just a flimsier hat. hat. It is what it is. Hat. I have I, one, so I, that's... And it's better days. <laughs> yours, yours is something else. As a matter of fact, uh, we talked last night, I think, I said, don't wear the 50-50. <laughs> yeah, I almost did. I mean, it, it has tried and trusty and true. It and has zero lacquer left on it. You should... I should have... I should have brought it. Yeah. I'll have to bring it another time. It, it's it's um it's I can like reshape cloth. it. It's like cloth. You can just he can pop the the crown right out, poke it back in. It's just it's a and super. And there's not a cracking sound. <laughs> but um but the fifty fifty is a completely different animal. Um even at this I consider that's still a different similar, completely different right completely different animal than that hat there the eighty eight ten that I have on. This hat is much better. It it looks like the fifty fifty kinda. It's got the, the, venting, the style, venting style of the venting, right? But it's it's much more sturdy. It's than, more robust. Yeah, than a fifty 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 the fifty 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 the fifty fifty and the fifty forty are they're much they're thinner just a and really lighter thin, weave. lightweight hat. And if you uh, the, we had a guy on the uh, American group. Uh, who bought a 5050 and I think it was his first American. He He's wasn't been, I remember seeing that post he wasn't impressed with. Yeah. And, and I said And that's <laughs> that's fine. He wasn't in the wrong for saying no. That. People were coming to attack him for it when you have your right to your own opinion. And Absolutely. That's I mean, don't get me wrong, that's probably not the best start. What did you do? <laughs> I've been sitting in this chair since I got here, sir. All right. <laughs> uh, uh. Let me figure out how to fix that. I know what's the problem is. The battery's dead. Uh, so it falls down? It, it, yes. So I gotta, I, gotta, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta figure out what to... Okay. All right. I got this. I got this. <laughs> Sweet. All right, we're back. <laughs> we're uh, we're laughing because um, you know it's it's um, it's always something, but we're gonna get through it, and um, we've got thirty five minutes to do it in <laughs> before the cameras screw up again. Um, what were we talking about <laughs> before you were so rudely interrupted? I don't remember. <laughs> Me either. I got ADD. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about the uh, we were talking about, about the, the cattleman crown mm -hmm. and um, uh, we were talking about wires, mm -hmm. the wire in the brim, and um, I think that I think we pretty much. Covered. I mean, I prefer the the softer wire. I do too. I've come to realize a lot of companies, for example, Rodeo King has a very stiff wire, and the way they overlap their wire is an issue in my opinion. I don't like it, but you know, what's my opinion worth? Yeah. Um, well, it's only an issue to you because you have to shape it. Yeah, the customer, as right. long as that does that, they're happy. Right. Now, it, um, you'll run into, if you haven't already, you will run into a hat that's got a stiffer wire in it that somebody's bringing you to reshape. 
mm-hmm. and you'll never be able to get it perfect because every time you get it where you want it, it'll bend or pop back into the place. It'll warp. That's because that wire is so stiff that it will hold that coil, excuse me, or that recoil of that old shape in it, and will never come back out. Well, another thing that um, that was that really uh, is it a palm that 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 hat that we were looking at today. Twister. You said the twister. You mm-hmm. sold you sold like thirty five of them or something like that. There was a bunch of them that mm-hmm. went out the door. Um, when you do the wire on that, you when you roll the back of the hat to get your your back, mm-hmm. you can feel that wire turning inside there mm-hmm. you know it just goes twang. a lot of the times you can when you roll a hat or you start to put corners in if you roll it just carefully or just right you can feel the hat pop mm-hmm. now sometimes that popping could be the wire snapping mm-hmm. yeah which there's a couple hats that are very prone to that i'm not going to call anybody out and there's a lot of hats we're that all friends again, here well you know <laughs> brookwood whiskey stetson um i've had multiple of them the same hat but a lot of hats, it's the wire adjusting mm-hmm. in there. Yes. Especially when you, I mean, when you go to readjust or move something, you get out of bed in the morning, you start popping. So wire does the same thing when you start moving it from its place of rest. Yeah, I, I think it's more prone on that hat, or I notice it on that hat because mm-hmm. it's really thin. Because it's thinner. Yeah. The so. wire is basically the only structure in that hat. Yeah. But you know what? They don't shape too bad. It's, it's no, a they shape hat. good and they hold up well. Yeah, I and can't they're cheap. believe it's 80, $85 is not cheap in my book for that hat. I think it's too much, but I think, you Compare know, it to, yeah, I'm, 200, 80 bucks. I mean, I get that. I get that. And, you know, this has been a sore spot um, <laughs> for me for a long time because uh, even though, even when American was $170, $180, mm-hmm. I think that the... Um, I think that the lower end hats that keep raising their price, um, there's there's too big of a difference in the hats. You know, if, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it, that the the Cavenders Rafter C hats for $130. They were $130 six months ago. Who knows what they are now? Probably $150. They, there's no way that hat should be $150. They were they were $35 hats two years ago. Why? And I mean, I just. I, I can't understand it. Why anybody would look at that hat and say, "Well, you know, it's a hundred and thirty dollars." It's just. Well, I mean, you got to think about everything that goes into making them, right? It, I mean, production, it's just, and then where are they getting their bodies? Are they getting their bodies here on American soil, having them made here, or are they having them made somewhere overseas? They're Mexico. They're, if they're made somewhere else, you have to pay someone else to do it. Then you right. have to pay shipping. You have to pay customs. Mm-hmm. So I mean. I'm not saying the hats are worth it. I'm not saying they're not. <laughs> well, but for me, I do understand it coming from a factory perspective. I do understand a lot of the different costs that go in now. For me, um, $130 or $150 versus $200, it's $200 every day. You know, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna find that extra $50 or $70. Well, it also depends on who you are and how you wear that hat. $200, that hat's going to last you a while. Because, I mean, this hat here, I can pick it up. Still in good shape, and how old is that hat? Uh, a few years? Year, two, and year and a half. Year and a half, and it's still in good shape. That hat will last you a few more years, depending how you treat it. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're one of those guys that goes and buys that $200 hat, and then in two weeks you've sweat through it and ruined it, you probably don't want to buy another $200 straw. You'll probably go back to buying those $85, $90 hats, so it doesn't hurt as bad, and they'll last roughly about the same, depending on how you treat them. You know what that the, that reminds me. We had uh, a gentleman ask a question about um, an American hat. I think it was his first. This was just yesterday. I think his first American hat on the group, and he said he sweated in it one time and the hat fell apart. <laughs> you know, it, basically. It How's just, he sweating? <laughs> What's he got in him? <laughs> Have you ever heard anything like that where it just um, it it becomes floppy? You've seen my fifty-fifty. I mean, yes, I have, but it didn't happen one time, right? No, that was that's, that. That was river water. I can guarantee it, right? No, no, <laughs> no. That was pure sweat, and okay. rain, all right, and rolling around in a truck that had been rolled. But so, for a hat to get to that point 
of what you just described would have to be worn day in and day out for a while. Maybe yes. not maybe not, you know, a couple of years, but at least a couple of a couple of weeks in the summer. I mean, my hat that I'm wearing right now, it's not maybe a month old and I'm already starting to sweat stains in the leather. Mhm. Because I wear it every day to work. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't work outside. I work in a store. The hottest part of my day is having steam in my face. Right. Oh, I have it so rough. Well, you know, and I wear a hat every day, um, mm-hmm. but I do have quite a selection, so I, they get rotated quite often. Mine do not. <laughs> um, you know, uh, so I, I wear something different. So they don't have... So uh, they don't build up the... Right. The, they don't see that level of abuse. Right, exactly. Virtually. Right. If you want to call it abuse. The the only one that has is the 50-50. That's my barbecue hat if I'm going out to... And that one over there. Yeah, that one. That one's kind of... The one that I reshaped. That one, yeah, you did. That one's that one's seen some abuse. <laughs> not, well, I mean, not a, a lot. A good hat has. I yeah. mean, everyone that has one, everyone has that hat with the Vietnam stories. Yeah. I, oh, that hat's been through this. That hat's been through... It's been through that. Everyone has at least one... Whether it's a cowboy hat or a ball cap, everyone has that one hat that, hey, don't touch it. Leave it alone. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> well, to me, the, uh, the 7800 is, uh, it's kind of my dress hat because I think it, it kind of, just the way it looks, it, it can do both. You know, it can be your everyday hat or it's good enough looking hat that it can be a dressier mm-hmm. straw. So this, yeah. is, this is the hat that I will wear in the summer um, most of the time if I, if I want to go uh to do, an event do a or video something. or yeah something like that this mm-hmm. is that that's the hat i'll wear so the 50 50 is my barbecue hat i will go out and and 110 degrees and have a barbecue and drink beer all day well look at all the vents what, i'm sorry look at all the vents on that yeah hat. yeah exactly it breathes exactly. so it makes it a little better this hat is as ventilated as the 50 50 um it's a little heavier it's not going to be a barbecue hat but exactly. it's, it's great for 110 degrees you know if you're out running around um, I'm still gonna, you know, Joby just uh, redid the uh, the fifty fifty for me. I never liked the shape that was in it. He did that, and uh, that's so that's something new. And and you know that's another thing about the fifty fifty. You know, he threw it on a block and, and popped it out. You know, I mean it's reshapeable. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> uh, I was about to say I could do the same thing with mine, but um, it's yeah. not worth it. Right. <laughs> right. Um, let's see what. Does that bring us to, uh, tell me, let's talk a little bit about, um, back to you and your, your history with American, because I would like to get uh, some more of your American history and then talk about uh, Joby uh, okay. and, and what's going on there. Anything but, you want to know. But uh, you, did, you did a lot of shaping. You did shaping and customer training. Mm-hmm. So you, uh, you did all the training or most yes. of the training for customers. And yes. you also went out to events and you also went out to stores and trained customers at stores so i only did that a couple of times there was only a couple of events that i went to uh there was a store denards in whitesboro whitesboro texas they had a they have a hat roundup every year and for a couple of years during that day they called the factory hey do you have anybody that can come hang out because they had me from American, and then one of the sales reps, I believe it was, they had David Baker and Sean Baker, his son. They were there. And then they had someone from Rodeo King and someone from Resistall there as well. People, I think they were sales reps as well. And they were, we were all there shaping. And we all shaped different brands that day. It's just, you know, help promote the store, help promote business. People would bring their hats in whatever brand, and we'd clean them and fix them. That's so I did cool, that actually. for a couple of years. And then a couple of different stores, they asked if I would come shape. Now, you know, that's that's not up to me at the time. I was working for the factory. It wasn't up to me. Stores that I teach or that I would teach how to shape or teach their people, if the owner was there, they'd say, hey, can we get you in the store to, you know, kind of give a basic once over to our people that are there that didn't get to come? Or could we get you to work on a weekend or something? That wasn't up to me. That was one of those deals. If you want me to do that, you have to get with them get with get with the factory because you know i don't want to step on any toes now i know um they didn't do much uh training in the last year Mm -hmm. eight months ten months because i i called uh, marche and i asked you know if i could get in the training Mm -hmm. when i when i started shaping and 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 got more into it and they said you know 
we're not doing the they training right the now. Schools. As a matter of fact, I, I actually went to Joby, and Joby gave me um, a school. A on crash a weekend, course. A crash course on a weekend. You know, and he's he's been really good about doing stuff like that. You know, when I when I was first there for the um, the. 500x steel um you know after we did the video he spent two hours just going over you know how to shape hats and just yeah. kind of just talking you know yeah. and joby's great guy you know uh really takes the time to talk to people whether you are there for um to buy a hat uh, whether it be an 80 dollar twister or uh or that three thousand dollar american exactly he he will spend the same amount he's going to give you the same treatment exactly and that's the way every store should do it every store every hat shaper you, you should treat them all the same exactly but um i forgot where i was going with that what were we talking about <laughs> squirrel <laughs> um <laughs> About my history and dealing with stores. No, we were talking about the, um, the, the, I said all of that to ask you what was going on with the, the, um, the school. The Why did they stop the, the school? So a lot of it had to do with one, we were trying so hard to keep up with production because this was kind of where I was having an issue because when the stores would come in, they're there from, they'd get there, for example, it, each class was two days. For example, if you came in Monday, Tuesday, well, you got to the factory about 9 o'clock Monday. Then you had at least an hour for a tour or longer, possibly. So you're not shaping until 10 o'clock. Then I have to give you a basic crash course. <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I give you a basic crash course. Well, then at lunch, at noon, we go to lunch. We're gone for another hour. So the first day, you only get to shape for three or four hours, basically. Then the second day, same deal. Now, it depends on the individuals in that class and how bad they want to learn or how interested they are. If they have a lot of questions, my job is to teach as well. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm supposed to do production, but my job was to teach as well. And if they were coming from five minutes, five hours, or five states away, they're all going to get the same information. Whatever they want to learn, I'm going to do my best to teach. So I would spend a lot more time with them trying to teach them as much as I could. So obviously if I'm spending that much time with you trying to teach you, I'm not producing as many for production. Right. So it would suffer. And for a year or so, it was I had a class every day. Every two days, a new group of people, same thing. So production fell behind. So they stopped the classes or kind of cut back on them to make sure we could keep up with production. And then also when we ran them, we were doing, I mean, think about how many hats you would go through as a practice. Mm -hmm. Most stores, they have one or two practice hats. Well, I mean, from the time you get there to the time you leave, you probably shape a hundred hats. Maybe. Really? Basically. Cause I mean, I don't, we didn't like to give them one hat and they'd shape it and then they'd have to push it out and start over. No, you, you can't learn because if you push the shape out on that hat, it's going to go back to it's going to go back to that you're exactly. not learning and so that that's an, that brings me to another question what's the process on their uh practice hats do they send them back to be repressed nope. how do they how do you a keep... lot of those hats were a lot of the straws that we use for practice hats they're damaged whether it's when they start the process and they start them and the press messes something up or there's something wrong with that hat it gets kicked it becomes a second and we don't american hat doesn't sell seconds so those hats would get used for practice hats. And then those containers, as I was talking about, all those damaged straws, if they were in decent shape, we'd go out there, we'd pull them out of the containers, go through them, see if there was any open crown flat brims that could be used for practice hats. And we would use those. But we got to do it in so many classes that we depleted that stock. So they kind of had no choice but to stop the classes until we could kind of build back up. And in an ideal world, there's no such thing as a damaged hat in the process. So I don't know what their stock looks like on practice hats right now, if there's even one or not. Right. Okay. Well, let's uh, let me let me uh, ask this real quick. Tell me about the lacquer. Mm -hmm. You know, we we talk about this um, in kind of our group. 
a lot. And that's, it's the big, it's kind of the big deal with American. Mm -hmm. It's what set separates it from any other brand, everybody else. Absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about the lacquer because we know it's an oil based lacquer Mm -hmm. and, and, um, so, and it's, it's a two, it's, it's applied twice, right? Yes. Well, technically three times, three times. Okay. Technically. So when it first goes into the lacquer room and it's a raw body that's been pressed into a basic shape, basic open and flat brim, they have the vats that they dip it in, but before they stick it in the vat, they spray it. And all that spray is just a mixture of lacquer as well, but it's just to give that hat a little bit of structure so when they dip it and spin it, it doesn't fold on itself. So technically, if you count that, yes, it's getting three coats of lacquer. And like you say, it's an oil-based lacquer, so it's much thicker. That's the only reason you steam these hats. When you steam them, you're not heating up the hat. The only time you really need it hot is so you don't crack the lacquer. Mm -hmm. Anytime you hear that crack, that means it's not hot enough. Right. But the lacquer is what absolutely sets American apart. So on a lot of, uh, maybe not this hat particularly, but uh, a lot of them you see... And, and this is kind of a, a big thing. People say, oh, I got to poke the lacquer poke out of the, the lacquer holes. the lacquer out of the holes. <laughs> so what, why, what causes that? Is it just uh, It's just the, the lacquer process? getting in the hole. I mean, because when they, when they lacquer it, they'll take the hat and they submerge that body into a vat of lacquer. It's under, mm-hmm. underwater technically. I mean, not water, but lacquer. But it's under, it's completely submerged in it. Mm-hmm. And although they spin off all the excess and they wipe it down by hand, it never comes out. Mm-hmm. So if you want perfect ventilation, yes, the best thing you can do is take a little needle or something and poke every little hole. <laughs> if you have that kind of time I on your not. hands, That's I do not. This one here, yeah, I'm not going to do it. I don't have that kind of patience. At 6100 is the oldest straw I have, and it still has uh, lacquer in the holes. <laughs> it's it just it is what it is. Yeah, but the lacquer is what gives the hats their strength. So how how uh, I mean, obviously, you don't go through your hats because you still have that 50-50 that's a, a rag, basically. Uh, Cody Bates says he goes through three hats a season. How, how about you? How long does it take you to go through a hat? If, if, you, if, you, <laughs> if you count the rag as, as being gone well, through. Well, that one was gone through not long after <laughs> I got it. That one was kind of, I need a new hat. Let's see how long this one lasts. But for me, and it also depends, you know, this hat right here, this is my quote-unquote work hat. It's the hat I wear to work, to a store, so it has to look good. I need it to be presentable. So right. this, when I go home, this is not the hat that I wear when I'm working outside or whatever I'm doing on my day off. If I'm going out, yes, I'll take this hat with me. But if I'm not working, I don't usually wear this hat. Because if I do, if I wear this hat as my everyday hat and to work, it will last me two months. Maybe. So do you wear hats when you're um, when you're not at the store? Yeah. Yeah. Now I do. No. <laughs> I used to not if you I I was the ball cap t shirt guy. Now pretty much every chance I get, it's just I don't know if it has to do with the area I'm in. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it has to do with three years at the factory every day wearing a buttoned up with American on it and a cowboy hat. That was my uniform. That's what I had to wear. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that has trained me and broken me, but <laughs> this is, I mean, when I'm not at work, you might, you'll see me in this same exact dress. The only difference is I probably won't be wearing a shirt that says American on it. Right. That's the only difference. American, Joby's, whatever brand. That's the only difference is, well, my day off, I'm wearing a button down. It's just not a, a company button down. So did, uh, did Joby say, Hey man, um, you can't, you gotta stop wearing that 50, 50. <laughs> He never, he didn't mention it. I mean, I kind of knew it already. Yeah. You know. I thought it was kind of cool, actually. Uh, it was, I mean, it was a testament to how exactly. good the hat is. Now, granted, you know, it scared a lot of people, especially the people they say, oh, I want that hat that you're wearing. Do you really? Do you really? This is what stop. you're looking for. I got to stop wearing this one into Joby's because <laughs> they, they ask uh, every time. They ask today. is like, where? I want that. Yeah. That's, and that's a lot of what happens in a store is when it comes to, and I can say this for American, I don't know about other brands. I don't know what styles look like for other brands. For American, there's so many different styles. 
every day there's at least one person that comes in that store that sees this hat and they say, I want what you have. And I didn't know it when I bought it. Mine is a little different than every other 8810, especially if you look at the venting or the weave on the brim. You see mm-hmm. how spread apart that is? Yeah. Everyone wants that. Everyone loves that look of it being so spread apart that you can see mm-hmm. through this. I didn't know it when I bought it. I wasn't paying attention when I shaped it that it had that. That's not common for the 8810. Is that one from American or is that one from Joby? The, 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 I mean, it's an American hat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you, did you get it well, at, from the factory? Did you just pick one up and say, all right, this is no, going to be mine? I, or I don't have, I never, I only got a couple of hats from the factory itself. Okay. My straws, I never ordered a straw. I would always just pick one up off a rack. I'd always find either a second or whatever and just made do because I have ADD and I'm an impulse buyer. I want it. I want it now. If I can't have it now, I don't need it. Well, obviously, when I was teaching and giving tours and things like that, I had to have a hat. So Mm -hmm. it kind of was one of those, what do we have? Because I didn't really care (laughs) for the 50-50. That wasn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. It was just one of those, hey, we have this. It's in your size. I guess I'll take it. Whereas this one here, I actually bought it from Joby's because, like I said, the 50-50 needed to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Whereas I've always liked the 8810. That's one of my favorites. So he had one in stock, so I went ahead and got it. Okay. Pretty interesting stuff. I didn't realize you could just uh, go in there and be like, "All right, I'll wear this one today." Off the well, you, I mean, you got to buy them. Yeah. I mean, if you see one in there that you want it, just like a customer would, pick it up, buy it, and shape it. Or well, pick it up, shape it, then buy it. I guess. Right. <laughs> but I went ahead, bought it, then I went ahead and shaped it because I knew it was what I wanted and how to do it. <laughs> so tell us about how you got to Joby from American and uh, what's your relationship like now with American since Joby stole you away? (laughs) Well, I guess I'll go ahead and clear the air. He didn't steal me. (laughs) He didn't steal me. He didn't, you know, plant a bug in my ear. Hey, come work for me. Leave the factory. No, that's, that's not how it went. I know some people have thought that some of my former coworkers at American that did not want me to leave have kind of thought that same thing. But it, it if anyone's done any sort of factory work it, it takes a special breed to do factory work and i'm not saying that the work is hard that's not especially at the factory i'm not saying that i'm not saying that about american because there's people that have it a lot harder it's one of those things when you do factory work you know what you're doing today you know what you're doing tomorrow you know what you're doing 10 years from now it's the same thing you do the same thing over and over all day i was doing 500 hats a day to get tiring, does it get boring? It gets, it gets it'll get you burnt out. I yeah. mean, you you ask, for example, truck drivers. My dad was a truck driver for over 40 years before he passed away. He and a lot of other people would say the same thing. After a while, the highway kind of grinds the soul off of you. Now, I'm not trying to say American stole my soul. That's not <laughs> it. It's just one of those, you do something long enough that it's not as fun as it used to be. It was really cool when I first started shaping. Wow, look what I can do. Look at the people that are coming in here. When I'm doing 500 hats a day, I'm knocking a hat out every 30, 45 seconds. This ain't fun anymore. <laughs> so when I left, when I put my two weeks in, it was one of those, okay, I think I, I just need a change. So I put my two weeks in. There was no bad blood there. And, well, apparently, I guess word got back to Joby that I had put my two weeks in. And he you know, I've known him since he opened, basically. He'd mm-hmm. come up to the factory to pick up hats. And I'd always BS with him and joke with him, help him load his hats, load his truck, whatever. So I'd only been down to his store once before. But he called and said, I heard you put your two weeks in at the factory. Is that true? I said, yes, sir, it is. He goes, well, he asked, you know, is everything okay? I said, oh, yeah, everything's fine. You know, I just, it was, it was time for a change. And he asked me, well, when you leave the factory... Do you think you're going to stay in the Western industry or stay in the hat business? I said, honestly, I don't know. I'd kind of reached that point where if I never see or touch another hat again, it'll be too soon. (laughs) But he said, well, before you make a decision, you know, before you do anything, I'd like for you to come, come down to my store, come hang out on a Saturday or Sunday. I said, all right, sure. Why not? I went down there a Sunday afternoon. I got there about 11 o'clock noon. And I stood there at the hat bar talking to him for 15, 20 minutes, just talking. 
And he said, you know, do you, you want to get up here and shape a couple of hats? Like, dude, this is your house, your rules. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And he said, well, get up here and shape for a few people. So I got up there, started shaping for people. You know, it's that's different than shaping at the factory. I'm familiar with it just from the people that came into the factory, but it's still a completely different ball game. So you didn't knock the first one out in 33 seconds? No, no, no. I'm, I can still knock them out quick. I just, I try to, I try. What you see when you come to Joby's and I shape next to you, that is me going as slow as I can. Mm-hmm. That, there, there is no slower than that. <laughs> and to me, that feels like an eternity. Okay. But I, then I shape. You haven't watched me shape then because I, I, I'm pretty slow. That's fine. I'm not going to tell anyone they're going too slow or too... I'll tell you you're going too fast, but I'll never tell you you're going too slow. As long as the customer's happy, I don't care how you're doing it. Right. But I shaped for, I think, four or five hours that first day. And I had fun, and I made good money. That was my first time being really introduced into the world of tips for shaping. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun. Now, I'm it? not there again. I'm not saying that, you know, American didn't let us get tips, the IRS, it, just it, as for it, the IRS, you only got three dollars that day, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't make no money. I got lunch money. Uh, <laughs> at the factory, people don't necessarily tip, and I'm not saying that to make them think they have to, or that that's that's not it. I'm not calling anybody out. I don't want that to seem that way. But it will. I guess it just wasn't as common there. So and, what, do you, what do you mean? Like, who would come in to get their hat shaped? Are you talking about like the rodeo stars? And well, the, that, or I mean, if. If you buy a hat that's American, and for example, if you buy a hat from Joby's that's American, and you don't want us to shape it there, that's fine. We're not going to take offense to that. You know, you could buy that hat at Joby's at best, NRS, wherever you can get American. You can buy that hat, leave it open and flat. You can go to the factory, walk in that front door and say, I want to get a hat shaped. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You can bring a hat. Or if you have your hat, for example, my 50-50. I lost that again. (laughs) Go ahead, go ahead. You keep talking. We're going to lose me on the uh, video, but we'll, we'll keep it on you for a minute. So, for example, that 50-50 that I have, my, my rag, as you call it. <laughs> yeah. I don't work for American anymore, so I'm just some random guy off the street. If I walk into that factory with that hat and say, I want to get this reshaped, they'll take me out onto the floor, and they'll take me to somebody and say, hey, can you reshape his hat? So if you have an American, you can get it reshaped at the factory, or if you buy a new hat and don't want it shaped there at the store that you bought it from, you can take it to the factory and have it shaped there. So people would come in and have that done. Sometimes it was just people that were passing by, or sometimes it was people who made the trip specifically for it to get it fixed or to get it shaped from new. Now, so that's not something that's advertised. It's not something that I even knew about. I knew you could order a hat. Sorry. And I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I know, I know I could go in there and and have somebody shape my hat and and i've talked about doing a video there as a matter of fact um i talked about this you know uh, the um the new hat that i just got the Mm -hmm. new straw that Mm -hmm. i had shaped in in kentucky Mm -hmm. we had actually planned on going into the in the factory and doing a segment on um you know the in-house hat shaping Mm -hmm. but i didn't i i didn't know anybody could do that (laughs) now now everybody knows and um you, you let the cat out of the bag, and so now American is going to be inundated with people wanting their hat shaped. Remember how I said they were fans of me up there? They're not now. Not not anymore, right? Not anymore. All right, so give me just a minute. We're going to fix this camera, and we're going to wrap it up, because I know you've worked all day, and um, we've been at this uh, almost two hours, give or take um, screw-ups. Ah. But uh, So let me fix this camera, and we'll try to wrap it up here in the next 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, that's something we can, we can think about. Um, it's a possibility. Just thinking out loud. I would th- see the idea was um, the idea was to go to the factory and um, just do a video because a lot of people don't realize that American hand shapes hats in no. the factory. You'd be surprised how many people don't understand that they think a lot of the hats they see in a store that are already shaped were done at the store. Right, it, or. Uh, I can't tell you how many places I've gone and how many people I've talked to that see an open crown and they say, I don't like that style. Well, well, what, what (laughs) they don't realize. Yeah. People think people wear them like that. Is that how, is that how people wear them? I've seen it. Yeah. You know, Uh, did you see the, did you see the one, uh, 
I did so many hearts today, man. It was ridiculous. I, I think I did five or six heart shaped hats. Um, but did you see the last one I did? It was open crown with hearts. Mm-hmm. Just a heart on the other side. Yep. <laughs> it was, that was the craziest thing I've ever mm-hmm. seen. But I mean, it kind of looked cool. It did. It did. It came out well. That was the one. That was the one. Yes. That was, up. That, was that was the um, the quarter horse, wide quarter horse, basically. Wide all I'm quarter call horse. It. Yeah. So, yeah, that was interesting. And then the then there was that that guy with the, the one of the J.R. Ewing. No, that he wanted the he wanted the Dallas look with the, the, that that tall crown. That um, oh, with the brick in the top, and then yeah, the, the one huge the one quarter he horse that old that old hat as well. Yeah, that we have to work on. Yeah, that was that was nuts. The brick, basically, a kind of a Canadian brick, kind of the old RCA style. It was an brand? RCA, an with, RCA with um, and then just quarter horse, quarter horse sides, it's quarter horse sides, and was, then the brim was just pulled down a little bit in the front. Yeah, he brought a picture of. Um, one of those guys off at the Dallas TV was it, show. Was that Dallas? Yeah, I looked at the... I, cause I, I was like, I recognize that, but who is that? And I, I read the oh, name that, at the bottom. That show was, might have been a little before my time. Oh, yeah, you are young. How old are you? 25. 25. 25. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. <laughs> or so yeah. I thought till I went to Joby's, and now I'm one of the oldest people there. <laughs> Until I walk in. <laughs> yeah, come hang out. More. Make me feel young. Yeah, but you're doing pretty good there um, with... The people. I mean, like you, you, you're really personable, and you got a lot of women looking at you too. I don't know about that. I don't know those those two that were in there today. Uh, that that Which I, I did. The, I shaped the the ch- children. The ones they that you were wanted. All over you. Oh, those two. Be nice. This is on national TV, and it's not really. But yeah. news to me. I mean, <laughs> I just I hit my rhythm. If I'm having fun, I'll mess with anybody. Yeah, you're doing you're doing well. I think um, I, you seem like you're enjoying it too. I do. I mean, I drive almost a hundred miles to work each way every day, so I have to, I got to enjoy something, and I'm I'm having fun with it. I I'm, mean, I think that's going to be the only problem. But I, you know, uh, what do you what do you see? Do you see a long career at Joby's? Do you see you staying in this in this um, career line? I mean, I mean, it's a it's a really look. This is something that I have strived for well over a year to get better at. I am by no means good, and I know that every day when I walk into Joby's that I have to put my A game, you know, up front because, you know, that's a big deal. People are going there to get a hat shaped, and there are very few people who shape like Joby, Marlene, and you, and a few others. You know, to get the hat as perfect as possible in a quick amount of time and still be able to interact with the people Mm -hmm. that takes a lot. It's all I can do to focus (laughs) on the hat. I I have, you know, I can talk and, you know, interact with the customer. Exactly. But I can't do both. No, that's, that's, (laughs) that's what I tell people. If you're, if you're learning how to shape, focus on the shaping. If you can talk to them while you're doing it, Go ahead, but don't feel like you have to at first, right? Because if you're worried about talking and keeping a conversation flowing, you're not worried about what your hands are doing. Yeah, I'm not trying to sound arrogant or cocky when I say this. A lot of what this is doing is muscle memory to me. Mm-hmm. My hands move faster than my brain a lot. So if a customer tells me what they want, I'm already going to go ahead and start on it and get a basic shape in, and I'm still talking to them. So for me, you know, I've been doing this for. Well over a year, um, year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, really, it was three days a week for a year and a half, and now it's um, because of my, you know, full time job mm-hmm. and this and my other ventures. It's one day a week if 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 I'm not traveling. So you know, it takes me a lot longer to get to where you're at. You were shaping hundreds of hats a day for you know a long time, and you probably got to that level. Uh, even the guys that work there full time, you know, five to six days a week, they're they're progressing a lot faster than me. So I just, just I don't feel like I'm I don't feel like I'm up to where I want to be. I feel like my shaping is well, just in the month that I've been there and the Saturdays that you have come in, I've seen a difference. I've already seen a noticeable difference, well, and I'm not that. the only one that's seen it either. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, I, and I've said this, um, 
it, to me, it's a big responsibility to shape at Joby's and I take it seriously. I'm not going to, I don't want to come in there and, and put out a bad product under Joby's name. Well, that's, and that's the thing. That's something to remember what for everybody, for every store you go into, whether you're shaping or the store shaper themselves, that, that, that hat's got your name on it as an individual as the one shaping it, but it's also got the store's name on it. Right. You know, for example, I, you know, you've heard me make the jokes to people that come in and out of there to Joby's. I feel like I kind of have to hold myself to a little bit different standard than the people that work in that store because, uh, I don't know if you can tell or not. Um, one of these things is not like the other. I don't. I don't match the the demographic in that store. <laughs> you mean you and I are I'm, the only two white guys? I'm the in white there boy in the store. So if, for example, I mess up a hat or somebody's not happy with it and they leave and they don't tell me they're not happy and I don't know, mm-hmm. and somebody says, "Hey, where'd you get that hat?" Oh, the white boy at Joby's did it. Yeah. Well, if you walk in that store six days a week, there's only one white boy unless it's Saturday. <laughs> there's only one white boy in there, and it's me. Right. So I kind of have a little bit different standard in my, I guess, maybe, maybe I'm making that up in my head, but I, I, I... Oh, no, you'll be the white guy on Google um, Maps, you know, when they when they you know, do the review. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I have, have to hold myself, you have to hold yourself to a good standard. For example, Joby's Hats, that's a massive name. It is. So, it is. once again, I didn't think that much of it when I started on there, but I've got the knowledge and the skills that I've... I've spent years practicing, but I still have to remind myself, hey, you've got a name that you're working for now, not just American. You're well, selling American hats. American's a massive name, too, and and so I think it's I think it's the same. But I was faceless there. Exactly. No one well, knew who true, I was true. there. I was just somebody that worked at the factory. No one there. No one. I was a nobody. Mm-hmm. I still consider myself that, but now at a store. I think I saw you on Instagram today. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know? No. You don't you don't watch Instagram. You are on the Joby's Hats uh Instagram all the time. Is that good or bad? I don't know. You tell me. I haven't look I'm not good with technology. The last time I posted I, I on Instagram was over a year or something I can't ago. Show you. Well, I can show you. I mean I can't. I'll show you later. But yeah, you were on um yeah, you were on the Instagram today and it, it happens. But uh <laughs> now, you, now it's in your head, isn't it? Paranoia. How do I act? How do I handle this? What do I do? But no, I. you have to hold yourself to that standard. You have to hold yourself accountable. Because, like I say, you think you're just a hat shaper. Well, you're shaping, one, American's product, which people hold a high standard to on its own Yes. because of the product. They also hold a high standard to that name that's also on that hat as well, the people selling it, because they came to that store, whether they live 10 minutes or 10 hours, they came to that store. They came yeah. to get the experience at that store. So you better make sure they're getting everything. Yeah, these aren't just people who are, come across, you know, they didn't just town. have, they're not just wandering through the mall and see no. it. Or they're no. not just wandering, you know, around no, and found they, it. They come It's a destination. From, it is. It is. I, you know, um, I, I can't tell you. You know, I had a group t- every today. day. Every day. I had a group today from Brownwood, Texas, mm-hmm. which. For most people that don't know where that's at, that's about about 300 miles mm-hmm. from here. And they came up here just to get a hat for this gentleman's son. Right. And they were going back home. They made that drive this morning. They turned around and made it to go back. They drove 600 miles. I had for um, I had two from Chicago. Three from Chicago mm-hmm. today. Three from Chicago today. They're coming from all over. Yes. So while that's awesome as a shaper to interact with those people, and it's an, it, to me it's an honor because they came that far and they're coming to see me. Granted, they're coming to see Joby's, but they're still coming to me to get that hat shaped. Now, whether it's just coming to me because I'm the one that was open, or whether they were waiting for me to open, whatever the case is, that's an honor to me. You have to be humble. You can't let that be lost on you. But they're coming that far. You better make it worth it. Don't blow through that hat like it's nothing. Make sure they're happy with it. Put on the show. Make sure they love it. If they don't like it, don't let them leave with it. (laughs) You know, you've heard, how many times do you hear me say it when I finish a hat? What do I usually say as I spin it on my hand? What do you think? Do you like it? And you hear me say it. If you like it, I I love love it. it. And, you know, I mean, everybody up there gets tired of hearing it. It's funny. It's funny. I've heard Ryan say that. Uh, Well, that's the deal. Because don't get me wrong, what we talked about today, you may not be happy with the shape. 
But if the customer's happy, what you think is a hat shaver doesn't matter. They have to be happy with it. Right. So that's why I say, if you like it, I love it. You know, I, there again, the same same kind of the blanket statement you hear. Oh, I can make you look good from the eyebrows up. It's up to you to do the rest. <laughs> you know, wh- wh- what do you think? No, it ain't what I think. If you ask what I think, you're going to wind up with what I've got. That's that's very true. Um, I, I've seen it in 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 hats I've shaped. If somebody comes in, and I've said it for a year for a year now, you know, it, my go to shape is this, mm-hmm. and it's what I know how to. You know, it's what I know. It's what I see in the mirror. It's I, that's, that looks mine. good to me, right? It's so yours. that's what you're gonna get if you don't know what you want. If you ask what, what do you think? Well, that's the basic questions I kind of ask people if they're not sure. Which a lot of people, they're not sure. A lot of people are buying a hat because they're there. It's an experience. They 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 know the name. I mean, there's there's four. They're buying one just because they happen to wander in. They didn't set out to buy one. And that's fine. So they'll ask, well, what do you think? Okay, well, let me ask you this. Are you wanting more of a traditional cowboy hat? Are you thinking more of a fashion hat? Or are you thinking more of what's popular? And whichever avenue they choose, I go from there. You're thinking what's popular, you're going to wind up with kind of a minic and a wide brim just because that's what's popular in that store specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking traditional, you're going to wind up with more of the old school cattleman and probably something just a little bit narrower. Now, if you're wanting fashion hat, that's a whole different ball game in itself. It's funny, in, in Austin... Um, the cattleman was king, you know, mm-hmm. it was everything I did was cattleman, it's all cattleman, part of cattleman. your area. And I probably shaped a handful of minics mm-hmm. in the time I was there. It's flipped now. You We're, don't do very many cattlemen. Exactly. And I, I did a cattleman, um, the other day, week or so ago. And I was like, that's not right. I, I struggled it, with the cattle. It seems foreign. <laughs> yes. So a lot of people, when they come into the store, I kind of, you know, they ask, well, what is, what do you, what is it you have on? I don't really call it the cattleman as much anymore. I'll just say it's the old man shape. You okay. know, and I'm not trying to call people out, but I mean, think about it. An old old grandfather hat. What is it? If it's not some horseshoe or something, it's a cattleman. So when they ask, well, what is that shape? It's what old folks wear. But to me, in my area that I live in, this is prevalent. This is popular. So I still rock it. Right. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's just you have to know what questions to ask to kind of guide somebody. Well, you see, uh, you know, there's um, a bunch of hats here, mm-hmm. and with the exception of this one and that one, they're all cattlemen, and they are pretty much all the same brim shape with slight... You find your style, and that's yeah. what you stay with. So, We're creatures know, of habit. It's not like, it's not like I got You don't have one of each. Hats, no. you know, you know, yeah. People that come in to get a hat shape, they'll... they'll Say, well, I've, I want to try something different. Let's let's do this. Let's go let's go real wide. I'm not used to that. Let's try that. <laughs> and then I'll shape it for them like oh, what yeah. they want, like what they're asking for. And they'll put it on. They'll look in the mirror, and you can see they're not confident. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I sit there quietly. I'm not going to provide any opinions or thoughts. It's not my hat, not my call. And they'll say, I don't know. I said, well, you want to try a little narrower? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you know, and we end up when we're done, we go round and round and round. And when we're done, they leave with the same hat they already have at home. Yeah. Just we're creatures of habit. It is what it is. And the people, some people have a hard time accepting it and they don't realize it. Some people know it. They come in, they say, they'll bring, for example, they'll bring this hat in and say, can you do this? I can. You want it? Say the word. I'll do whatever you want. So. It's all in what the customer wants, and there again, if they're not sure what they want, it's up to the hat shaper to be able to ask questions to kind of guide them, find out what way they want to go, and then you have to know the knowledge of your own shapes and the shapes you are best at or your strong suits or what's popular in your area because what's popular here, a minic and a wide brim. What's popular in Kansas, something totally different. What's popular out east in North Carolina, Different story. I mean, it, it's you have to know what's popular in your area. That's that's very true, very true. It's um, it's interesting to see too, and mm-hmm. and how it becomes popular and and what what's driving that. But that maybe that's something we need to look into. I think I've exhausted all my questions today. <laughs> what about you? What's next for you? Drive home. Drive home. <laughs> all right, 
All right. Sounds good. Well, hey, man, I really appreciate you coming in and talking to us today. Um, and, well, thank you for having and, me. And putting up with our, our technical difficulties. I, it's all fun for me. Uh, I expect that once this gets out there, um, somebody's people are going to watch this because they're going to want to know the ins and outs of what actually happens with the American and, you know, the we're gonna have some. We're gonna have some good feedback, and we're gonna have a lot of questions. Well, so if you I, never hear from me again, it's because I gave the wrong info to the wrong people, and something <laughs> happened, and you know, right, right. So I'm nowhere to be seen. But I, I'm assuming we're gonna get a lot of questions, and we might want to have you back uh, to answer some of those. I'll do whatever. <laughs> I mean, great. I have to drive by here on the way to and from work every day, so. There you you know where to find me. There you go. Six days a week, you know where I'm at. <laughs> Sounds good. You've got well, my information. We definitely appreciate it, and um, it's been really, really a lot of fun. And we've I've learned things that I didn't know. So. <laughs> that could be good or bad. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's always good. I, I enjoy knowledge, and it's, um, you know, especially learning about something I'm passionate about. Oh, absolutely. Um, I share that, and that's, that's why I'm enjoying this. That's why I was agreed to do this. It's something <laughs> new to me. It's something for me to learn. Right. Just right. like learning in a store. There you go. So I'm I'm glad you had me. I had, I had a blast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we appreciate it. So we've got a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, check out American Hat Company Facebook group. If you're not a member, join it. Uh, it's really growing pretty fast. We got about twenty. Or actually, we got about thirty-two thousand, thirty-three thousand members right now. If you have questions about American Hat. Uh, there's a lot of good information. I'm sorry? 34,000. 34. Are we at 34,000? Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I didn't even see that coming. So <laughs> I didn't see that happen. I knew it was uh, 30. I don't know what it was. It was 34 it, on the drive over. Ah, that's awesome. So uh, I hadn't had a chance to uh, to look at that today. Uh, it must have happened today because I, I thought it was 33. Maybe it was 32. You probably won't know. see me in there. <laughs> yeah. I'm a quiet he, person. He hides. But... Um, We've I'll got, work on that. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get you in there. We'll get you rolling on that. But uh, we've got some new T-shirts coming out. Uh, this is our first launch of T-shirts. Check those out. Uh, CowboyCartelGroup.com. Uh, they're on our store. We're doing pre-orders. They're going to come out by the first of July. They're going to ship by the first of July. Uh, really cool stuff. Um, helps us. Uh, helps the the Facebook group. Helps the YouTube channel and helps us bring all of the content that we're bringing. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, that kind of stuff helps pay for microphones and, and, and the equipment. So we really appreciate your support. If you can get one of our T-shirts, they're all American-made. They are American-made T-shirts, and they are printed right here in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, so, we're, you know, we're supporting local, and we ask you to do the same. Um, as always, we are um, represented by, or we're representing American Hat Company and Joby's Hat Store, and American is our official hat. Joby is our official shaper. Check them both out. Thanks for watching.